What's up guys, Hong Nguyen, OG Fitness, welcome to the channel. So I'm a lifelong martial artist, a black belt in judo and a blue belt in BJJ. And this channel, oh, I'm also 44 years old guys. And this channel is dedicated to fitness for martial arts for older guys. Now, if you're a younger guy, hop along for the ride. I think there's a lot of things here that are gonna benefit you and help you along your journey to become uh, the ultimate martial artist. All right, so in today's video, we're gonna talk about Aikido and why, holy, holy crap, I think it works. And I'm gonna show you guys the video that convinced me that it's worth giving a shot, okay? Because there's, there's some stuff out there, but you look at it and it looks very airy-fairy, it looks very choreographed and all that. And I guess people maybe, I don't know, maybe I haven't consumed enough Aikido content on YouTube, but it's just from what I've seen, right? But this video here from, from this channel called Aikido Flow actually sold me on the, the idea that Aikido might actually be very useful and would complete my skill set um, as a martial arts. Because at this point, I know how to grapple, I know how to strike, but hmm, Aikido, Aikido there's something to it, man. You know, it's, it's next level stuff. And it can be very, very useful. And just a little fun fact for you guys, for those of you guys who don't know, of course, is that both guys, both founders, right, of judo and Aikido, they uh, they both come from traditional Japanese jiu-jitsu. You know, one just made judo and the other one made Aikido, basically. Like that's 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 the uh, uh, that's as that's what I understand from what I've read. But of course, there's probably a lot more details. So you guys just you'll know, comment down below and and. Um, you know, lay down some knowledge for me and the rest of the crew. All right, let's check out this video. All right, let me rewind this. Do I have it on normal speed? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. All right, let's go. So the title of this video is Why Aikido is the Best Martial Art. So obviously, you would click on that because you would probably not agree. Uh, kind of like I, I was like, what? what? Really? No. Hell no. It's not the best. But I think this man is legit. And he opened up my uh, my mind to the possibilities. All right. Let's check it out. Do, 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 do. It's funny. They're not wearing. Hi. Uh, my name's Azu. Welcome to Aikido Flow. And... Um, I'm here to basically explain to you or basically answer the question why I choose Aikido over any martial arts. Now, I want to stress, I'm not saying Aikido is the best martial art. Notice, guys, they're not wearing the dress because Aikido usually has the, the traditional, they have the gi top and then they have the, uh, the other thing that they wear at the bottom. I don't know what it's called. Uh, so those of you guys who know, just put it down below. But it, it looks like a, um, well, not a dress, but you know what I mean. Arts in the world, there's aspects of it which are brilliant aspects of all martial arts. For me, all martial arts is brilliant. But for what I do, Aikido, I found, is the best martial arts. My day job, I work in a school teaching kids. Part-time, I do security in nightclubs. I've been doing that for about 15 years. And I've been in a lot of situations where I've used Aikido in real life. Yes, I was going to say something, but I'm not sure what I was going to say. But just to give you guys a, a, a little heads up. And the reason why he actually worked a lot as a doorman. And I like the fact that he, it makes sense that it's ideal for him because he also works uh, in a school. So in a school, I mean, you don't really want to, you know, kids are impressionable at that age, teenagers. So yeah, maybe not show them how to punch and kick or, you know, anything like that. Or if ever you have to. Uh, lay hands on a kid? No, you won't want to do that, but you know what I mean. It's best for me is because it gives me choice. Now, I'm not that young anymore, and it's nice to be able to do something mm -hmm. without having to punch or kick all the time. I've seen... I've been. Around. I like that. Okay, guys, I'm just going to speed up the, the talking a little bit here, so I'm going to put it at 1.5. I think that makes sense. Now, what he said there actually resonated uh, with me, you know, because you don't want to punch and kick all the time. You know, some situations uh, don't require that. 
and yeah, and you have options. I like having options. I like having different tools in my toolbox so I could use, and that makes a lot of sense. Arrested twice on the job. And that's often been a result of me hitting somebody back in the days and police come, they see blood, broken nose or whatever. Next minute I'm in cuffs, I'm being arrested. And that was... That makes sense. So let's say if you, if you use, um, you know, your striking to, to, to handle a situation, well, somebody's going to get hurt. And I want to add something to this as well, is that if you punch somebody, most likely they're going to, they might fight back. Chances are they're going to fight back. But if you just kind of subdue them, you know, using a keto joint locks and all that, then yeah, you're going to see how he does it, but then it doesn't have to escalate. Whereas if you hit somebody, it could escalate very easily. Like unless you're, um, you're, you're, you know, you're, you punch him and he kind of get hurt and then you punch him again and you knock him out kind of thing. Okay. There's that. But if you don't knock him out and the guy is the type of guy that, uh, uh, that has fight in him. Okay, then now you just escalated the thing, and now you gotta, you gotta uh, uh, crank up the intensity, and which is not something you want. And then after that, when the cops show up, there's blood all everywhere, you know, bruises and broken teeth, and you know all that. <laughs> it's just me acting in self defense. But Aikido lately, I found it's given me a choice. Like for example, sorry, Andre, can I borrow you, please, Andre? For example, I've been in many situations now. Let's. I'm going to talk about, first of all, the, the situations where I've managed to defuse the situation and have it not escalate to anything. Okay, one scenario, one guy here, his mates are kicking off, so all security fighting here. This guy, I'm trying to keep him calm, and suddenly, he just grabs me, okay? And he grabs me, and he goes for a punch here, okay? I was able to block it, he come with a Nikio and say to him, hey, my man, relax, calm down, okay? He felt a bit of pain here. You see, that's, that's pretty interesting. Um, because the way he demonstrated that, that could actually, uh, that actually looks realistic like something that maybe someone would would actually do, you know, kind of like push you and grab you. So you can kind of do something like that. Because my instinct, if someone were to push me, I would just crack them, you know? And if I crack them, after that, I would clinch up and that would throw them. Like that's that's kind of my reaction, right? Like I'm going to, I'm going to hit him first. But here, he, kind of, he was able to uh, diffuse it without hitting the guy. And so I found, I find that interesting. Like I've, I've learned some of this stuff before in, in some self-defense um, uh, lessons that I took. Uh, way back in the day, but I mean, if you don't practice it, you're not going to have it uh, available to you as to, to use as a tool, as a skill. And that was enough for me. I didn't even have to take him down all the way or anything. That was enough for him to say, "All right, mate. All right, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good." And you could also knee him in the face <laughs> once he's down on his knee like that. But yeah, maybe not do that. And at this few situation, another time, same thing. Guy went for a grab. I grabbed his hand. I gave him a nice lock here and I said to my man, please, relax yourself, calm down. You know, and that was enough to disperse it. He was about to kick off, but it wasn't. I've also escorted. See, there's that too. So you can uh, right into a joint lock, but you know, something that I would, I would be, I would want to do. So instead of like punching him with closed fists, open hand, right in the throat, but of course not too hard, right? Just enough to keep him distracted and then, um, then going to the joint lock. Because I think that this right here, like that, okay, not too hard because you don't want to like, uh, you know, kill him or anything, but just enough to like distract them so then you can grab the arm and get into that position. That would be an option. I, it's something I would do or a kick in the nuts. A kick in the nuts and then you do that. That'd be that'd be good too. People out of the club, many times where I've come along, they've been lots of security pinning down one guy, trying to hold this guy in a struggle. And I've come along and I've just grabbed him here, got him in a bit of a lock here and said, all right, everybody let go, let go. And you could use this on your girlfriend. <laughs> or on your kids. <laughs> Come, mate, let's go. And I've walked out of the club. Take them out the door. Yes, goodbye, mate. Done. Dusted. So it hasn't really... You see, that was nice. I like that. I like the fact that he was able to just manhandle somebody like that and just throw them out and, and, and done. You know, and I think that, um, like, if you don't have these skills, what are you going to do? Like, you guys ever heard the saying, if all you have is uh, a hammer... Everything looks, every problem looks like a nail. So you're just hammering away when you free. You, you don't, um, you don't need to, right? Sometimes you need a screwdriver, for example. Had to escalate into me throwing punches or whatever. And, and to be honest, sometimes people do silly things and maybe you want to inflict a bit of pain on them for them to make you realize that, okay, I shouldn't mess here. So it makes me able to do that without actually leaving any visible damage on them. I've also been in a scenario when I was a...
That's true. Visible damage, man. Like um, if you have to, if you want to beat somebody up or throw them out or subdue them or de-escalate something, and all you know is, you know, like hands, you know, you do Muay Thai, um, you do boxing, then what are you going to do? Like punch and smash them in the face, you know, elbow them in the face, knee them in the face, crack them in the face. I mean, it leaves a lot of marks. So, but like my, my thoughts on that would be, well, I would, something that wouldn't leave a mark, at least if they're wearing pants, you know, and clothes on and all is that you would, um, you would hit the legs, you know, that was one thing. Um, you can kick them in the stomach, you can do body shots, you know, and, and that's why grappling too. Like I already have a grappling base uh, in judo and in jujitsu. So I'd be able to subdue somebody without having to, uh, to crack them, uh, at least not in the face, you know, but you could crack them uh, elsewhere on the body. That's why uh, knowing how to throw kicks uh, is very interesting, you know, like kicking uh, at certain areas of the body that will um, have a, have the biggest bang for your buck. So for example, kicking in the nuts, which is, you know, you don't need to be training uh, years on end to learn how to kick somebody in the nuts. I could show you that in one second, you know, uh, or you can, you know, kick the, um, you kick, you, you kick the legs, you know, you push, kick the knee, you push, kick the, uh, push, uh, push, kick the thigh, you, you know, like uh, you teeth the stomach. I mean, those are things that you could do and then you can get into your grappling. I mean, that's, that's just a thought like that. Pat kicked out about 20 guys from the club, you know, I have a security, they started to rush the door. Now, we're all kind of fighting here, but one guy came at me, he came with a big swing, okay? Boom, this is when I thought, I have to go all out. So the block was here, and I just came here with my elbow, bang! Took him out, he was done. That was epic, that was epic. So I never thought about elbowing some fool in the chest like that, because, you know, my instinct would have been to elbow the guy in the face, but you elbow the guy in the face, well, you're gonna, you're gonna bust him up hard, you know? And, uh, you're going you're gonna to cause damage. And also, like, if you get his teeth here, like, you're going to break his teeth and you're going to get, get cut open and you're going to have, you might even have his teeth stuck into, in your form, in your bone here. So that's kind of, it kind of sucks. And then after that, you have to go to the hospital. You have to have stitches. You have to get your shots. Maybe the guy has some kind of disease. So, hmm, elbow in the chest. Not bad. Doesn't leave a mark. Well, it might, but, you know, he has a T-shirt, right? What is he going to do? Like, take off his shirt when the cops come? <laughs> Done, okay. And then the other guy, he came along, same thing. It was going for the haymaker. And all I did, I came here, boom, a nice clothesline. That could be I like that, clothesline. You know, like you see that in movies and all that, but I, I could see how that I could integrate that in, 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 into, you know, my judo and, and all that. In judo, like we have the overhand grip, but a lot of times in judo competitions, guys just come across and just smack you in the face with their form anyway. And it's, it's, a, better, it's a better way to take down somebody with a, a, a strike, that's not really a strike, or at least that won't cause any any uh, visible damage, right? Because you can clothesline the guy, and he'll he'll, he'll pop his head back, and he'll uh, he'll feel the shock, and he'll land funny and all. And yep, you could subdue him like that for sure. Be seen as a tension argument, but this time it was a block. Bang! I just went through. This was a scenario where I thought, okay, I need to do something here. There's 20 of them. I need to damage some people because what it resulted in me damaging a few people, and everyone was just like. Now, imagine if you've had legs, like uh, foot sweeps as well. So you're good at foot sweeping, you're good at joint locking, uh, you're good at, and, and when I say joint locking, I mean standing up, standing joint locking, not joint locking like a jujitsu style where you're on the ground and you're, you're, uh, you're subbing somebody, right? So you're doing the standing up submissions and you have sweeps. Uh, so you have your ashiwaza and on top of that, you, you know, you can close mind somebody and elbow them right in the chest. I like that. I like Whoa, you know what I'm saying? Everybody just backed off once they saw these people on the floor. It was a, they backed off. I've also, also, just a thought like that. But if got, let's say you're able to manage to take a guy down, well, what do you do afterwards, right? Because he might uh, he might still be nice and awake and want to get up. I think that you could you could stomp. Um, obviously, if you stomp the head, that's 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 pretty intense. I mean, that's and it's dangerous as well, right? Uh, for you in terms of uh, you know the law, and then after that for the other person because you could literally. Uh, you know, cause permanent damage there, serious damage. And but what you could do is you could stomp on on the on the joints, right? Okay, you could stomp on the nuts, of course. You know that's uh, that's a, a Mary Dote style. <laughs> or you could stomp on the knee, okay. Or if you want to be a little bit nicer, you could stomp on the ankle. So you break the ankle, okay. And so it doesn't really leave a mark, at least you know not with the shoes and the the socks and the pants on. 
But if you if you break that, then you immobilize them. So then they can't really get back up. And even if they do, they'll be kind of crippled. So, you know, I mean, that's just a thought. And sometimes you have to have these thought experiments to, to be able to, uh, so that it's in the forefront of your mind. So if anything ever happens, it's, it's there, you know? Also been the scenario where some, uh, one guy threw a punch and as I blocked, I just got him here. And I was able to take him down and just hold him there until. Yeah, that's, uh, you, I, I would need a lot of practice to pull that off to me, honestly, because my instincts, uh, the way I'm trained, because I'm, I'm more trained in, 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 you know, like Muay Thai and, and boxing and all that. So I would just like, I would, you know, uh, slip that. And of course, then next thing you know, I would either clinch up and throw him, you know, to the ground or I would, you know, punch him. But that's the thing. You don't need to punch. It's good to have the option of not punching somebody. You know, more security came and then took him out. But like I say, it gave me a choice. A lot I like breaking the wrist thing, you know, like you see, boom, boom, you control the guy and you have the wrist like that. So I like that as opposed to, um, you know, having to be on the ground, on top of them, like on in mount or, you know. Hmm. Last time I punched somebody in the face, me, me and a colleague, the guy, it, he came at me, I moved here, I punched him here, bang. I had teeth marks in my hand. My hand was bleeding. I had to go for a tetanus shot. I didn't want to take any chances, so. Okay, so you see, that's the other thing too. Like if you, if you're, uh, if, if you're if you're street fighting, okay, you don't have any gloves on, you don't have any wraps. So when you hit, well, you can you know break your hand, uh, you can get cut up. You know if you punch his teeth, you can have uh, his teeth like indentured into your your skin, your knuckle, and all that, right? But here's the alternative: if you want to uh, not have that situation, what you could do is open hand, right? So let's say you block, boom, and instead of having a closed fist, okay, open hand. Use this this part of your palm right here, okay? And you either, you know, you you slap them here. You know, you get the chin here. Like, even if you guys just do this, go like this. You could, you could feel your brain rattling already. So this would be great as well. You would keep an open hand, right? And then elbow, like maybe on the 